all right what is going on guys welcome back to the channel if you've been following the stroker build so far you would know that we've already connected our sti rods to our ej257 nitrided crank and now we are ready to start start starting on putting the case house back together uh we got uh three one right here one right here and uh, one right here and one right there all uh passages but we got our three o-rings from subaru which are these three right here there's the part number and this large one is for the coolant passage which will be this orange one and it's also straight from subaru other than that we also got to put in our king racing bearings which i got right here and yeah it's gonna be fun and i also got my silicone ready because there is just i gotta find the pdf but there's a specific path that you gotta put the silicone on or it will forever leak uh so i have to find that sheet i already got my silicone ready to go uh i got my case half bolts from straight from subaru ready to go there in there this is just more miscellaneous gaskets straight from Subaru. These are all Subaru gaskets. But yeah. Look at the attention to detail that Outfront Motorsports did on my block. Looks amazing. Looks amazing. It was bored and bored with torque plates and honed and well, cross hatched and also uh, hot tanked and their attention to detail is just magnificent look at that look at that man. looks great for uh, extra hundred dollars you can get them to detail your block which I did not for I didn't feel like it was going to be necessary but you can just tell where they did such a fine job look at that and they also went back and smoothed all the mating surfaces like this one and this one and a bunch of other ones like this one and this one and this one they hit it I guess with like maybe a grinder or a polishing wheel I don't know but they flattened them out, smoothed them, kind of deburred them. And it looks terrific. So without further ado, I guess let's get right into it. All right. First thing is I went ahead and pulled, put in my O-rings from my oil passages, the three O-rings from oil passage, and the one O-ring from my coolant passage. I did take a little bit of uh, Ultra Black gasket maker, and I lightly, lightly put a little bit. Well, this is a better example. Uh, right there on the uh, on the bottom of this gasket do not put too much because it can come apart and destroy a bearing block up oil passages and uh, destroy bearings so that's why I lightly put any on there and I made sure to wipe off any that's actually inside this channel or inside of any of these channels and same thing with this one and you see you got a nice little gap right there so that's why I, on this one I put very, very little. And I applied it straight to the back of the O-ring. These I applied it to the mating surface that the O-ring set it, the O-ring seated on, that the O-ring is seated on. Uh, but other than that, wipe off. Make sure you wipe off any excess. And yeah, very, very little is all you need. All right, moving right along, I guess. Uh, now we will begin to put in our bearings. We're going to wipe down our journals and then uh, go to put in our King's Racing Bearings. Uh, pretty self explanatory. Uh, the larger ones, you know, will be your uh, either rear. Sit right here. You see that nice little lip right there? Especially made for this larger bearing. And then smaller ones. You get the idea. Rinse and repeat. See how there's no lip on the front. Once again, no lip on the front or on the back side of the front. So yeah. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, got most of the bearings in. I just wanted to, to uh, take time and show y'all uh, 
the larger bearings there'll be uh larger bearing on the center cap and then also on the end cap well the front cap and the largest one which would be this one right here would be placed on the end cap uh facing the transmission see it has this nice machined little lip so yeah and there's a size comparison you'll you'll notice it though if you go to put a a small cap in a large cap you'll notice it it won't fully take up the entire space but yeah all right now that we got all our uh main bearings in uh i went ahead and pushed them down make sure both edges on both sides are flush or about as close as flush as you can get i went ahead and took some plastic and pushed down that way we didn't disrupt the uh coating on the outside of the bearing but i went ahead and pushed down all of them in three different points on uh, all of the bearings make sure they're all seated this one uh as you can see we got a little tang mark right here in the block same tang marks that are in throughout the block but these uh the big end bearing didn't have a tang mark to line up with that but no big deal so we got all the bearings in and everything looks really good uh go ahead and get uh, some assembly lube and i'm gonna apply some assembly lube to each bearing and then we'll be ready to wipe off the crank and set the crank in and then uh, once we set the crank in we'll go ahead and apply our silicone uh, i have to look up the exact procedure but there's an exact procedure on the silicone and uh we're not gonna get too liberal with it because any of that silicone breaks the grades or breaks up it can block up these oil passages these small oil passages in next thing you know you're uh you've destroyed your uh bearings so yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab my assembly lube and i'll be right back all right we went ahead and got our crank set seated in there nicely uh i did go ahead and apply a little bit of assembly lube to the actual uh crank journals themselves before we attach our crank caps i made sure to clean up any excess except for this right here i'll just make sure there's none on this surface and it looks like there's a little right there you don't want to get too too liberal but a little, too much wouldn't hurt just make sure you don't do like me and get it down in there it ain't gonna hurt anything but no reason to have that much and i got it dripping down the side right here okay there we go and got my other two rods one right here and the other is right here we'll have to hold them up when we go to and snake them into these two bores but uh yeah be careful rotating your crank if you're trying to uh apply uh slather the cr uh, journals in assembly lube or get the assembly worked assembly lube in uh do not let your rods hit this inside of the cylinder wall as you go to rotate i did rotate just a little bit but just don't let your connecting rod smack the side. All right, so now I guess we'll, we'll begin our silicone. I gotta look up the diagram where I found the PDF file that where the detailed route of applying the silicone around here because there's a very detailed route, very detailed. But yeah, after that we'll get right into it. All right, guys, it's the next day. We done finished up putting our case halves together. Uh, it got dark on me, so I uh, went ahead and got the case halves together. I didn't get a chance to record any of it. But uh, all I did was I laid down my silicone and then uh, joined the case halves, and I torqued the case bolts. Uh, there's a very detailed uh, route, on, not only on the silicone, but also on the case bolts. Uh, I can't remember offhand. I think it's 29 foot-pounds on... Uh, I, you'd have to look it up or I could look it up but it's I believe on this side and then on this side it's a uh, hand tight and then go night do a 90 degree uh, yeah, 90 degree turn and then uh, I think these are also 29 foot pounds of torque on all these case bolts but yeah you'll do the larger case bolts on the outside uh, starting on I believe on starting on this head do the 90 and then you go over here and you'll torque it down to 29 foot pounds of torque and uh, same thing on the bottom case bolts and there's a bottom uh there's yeah there's two case bolts one right there one right there and same thing on the back side 
and then uh, after you get the, the halves do the big case bolts or the halves uh, then you'll move on to the actual smaller case bolts on the top to go all the way around the engine you got one uh, on the bottom as well and on the bell housing back of the bell housing and with these you pretty much just go in a start circle you start with this one and go that one that one that one then back side and then uh, underneath I think there's one underneath right sh under sh here and then yeah you just come all the way back around to this one and yeah uh, I made sure to wipe off any excess uh, silicone off the case has because once you torque them down they will depending on how much silicone you put on them they will just begin to ooze silicone and yeah we wiped off all the silicone the crucial part is mostly on the bottom where uh where your oil pan is going to sit you don't want any silicone in your uh in your in your oiling system so uh keep that in mind because it'll uh, degrade and break down over time and it can pat uh block up the small oil passages and yeah it could be you could be doing this whole process again but yeah thank you for watching uh feel free to smash that like button and subscribe if you ain't already subscribed to stay up to date with uh the build of the cj 205 stroker and uh i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching